Welcome to an exclusive episode of The Off Season, where today I am at Henry's Coffee Shop in Scotstown, where I'm going to be speaking to Rory Began over the last couple of weeks and months on his journey to make it to the NFL. <laughs> How are you? Thanks, very best now. Nice. Perfect, Eddie. Now, Phil, that's Vanilla. Shane, that's for yourself. And Ari, that's for you there now. Perfect, Laura. Nice, Laura. Right. If you thank want you. to give him that coffee, just leave it over there somewhere. Perfect, Phil. Now. Thank you very much. That's brilliant, thank you. Oh, thanks, yes. you. All right. Now. Thank you. Enjoy. Yeah, Perfect. Thank you. Well needed. What's the story, Ro? All good, man. How are you getting on? Good. Do you want to close that door, Pete? Exciting few weeks, few months. Yeah. Um, Weird now, to be honest, it's something completely different to what I'm used to, especially coming after the new year and stuff, but um, yeah, exciting, looking forward to it. So, in this episode, like I said outside, it's a, it's a bonus episode, I wanted to give you the opportunity to speak for yourself, um, obviously there's been a lot of talk at the minute with um, everything that's been happening over the last weeks, months, um, Talk me through when you got basically your first message. Uh, were you with Mon? Were you, was was Scotland involved, or who texted you? Talk me through that process. Yeah, so um, I was actually at work. I was at the office one of the days, and uh, just got an Instagram DM. Came in through from Tag Leader. He runs the Leader Leader Kicking page on, on Instagram and TikTok, and uh, yeah, he just he, there's a big spiel about this new international player pathway, and there's an opportunity now for. GA kickers, rugby kickers to get involved in the NFL and that time when I sure got the message I didn't you're thinking, ah sure. This you should yeah. probably sent this out to a load of people and yeah. uh, funny enough I actually got in touch with yourself and uh, seen what did what did you think and, and he, he mentioned that yeah you told me about a couple of other goalkeepers and, and free takers in Ireland that were going to it so I said look at I'll give it a shot. So it was around the nineteenth of September that happened. We were in the middle of um Scotland at the time, so it was always that wee bit anxious about doing it. Is that the club championship? The club championship the club at the time, yeah. So I was a wee bit anxious about it because I think we had training that Sunday and I went up that Sunday evening to do it and um, it was a wee bit tight after the training, but I'd done a wee bit of kicking and got through it. Didn't do absolutely loads that day, but uh, whatever I did do, um, Tag was impressed. He was impressed with a lot of us that day, in fairness, um, and then just continued the whole thing on. A uh, couple of sessions here and there through likes of uh, back to Banbridge where we were at that time, where we started. We were up in uh, Dublin, up in Ballymun. Um, I was very in and out of it because cost time was going on. We were, yeah. we were out every two weeks, so I wouldn't, I didn't want to do any kicking, any training weeks, so any match weeks. Okay. Um, so weeks off, I would have went up and done maybe one or two sessions with Tag. So I was just keeping that ticking over and um, we're here now. Uh, Obviously, the England England uh, opportunity come up to go over to Lockborough University, and I thought maybe we were just going over there to to chat to a few people who were in the NFL Academy and, and stuff. I didn't think there would be much seriousness about it. Is that it. what the academy is? That's where the NFL Academy is in in Lockborough. Right, There's okay. young dad Adam Quinn actually who's over there at the minute. And I was actually chatting to him the other day, and he's over there, and he was there that day as well. And the night before, that man was kicking in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, like so. Um, chatting away to him and found out the IPP scouts were there, International Player Pathway Scouts, and there was Coach Hagen, who had been there with the NFL Academy as well, and <clears throat> we were just showcasing. There was about twenty of us there, um, and and were they all were they all twenty Irish GA lads? No, no, there was only myself, Niall, Morgan, Charlie Smith, and Mark Jackson come over from Ireland. Right. Okay. And obviously Charlie, and Mark now of. Are going with you, yeah. Um, um but, Char yeah, yeah, and uh, the rest were a mixture of English rugby players. There right. was actually a man from India over, um, and yeah. fairness, he traveled a long way to, to go over. And uh, 
yeah, mostly it was English between ex rugby players and 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 um, rugby players at that time, and maybe the odd soccer player too. But um, funny enough, the four Irish that were over were the ones who got stood out, were picked into the last five to go into elimination. Right. And was that all on that day? The elimination on that day. The elimination was. It was wasn't like a proper elimination it was just like a, right let's pick, take the five best of today and let's put them up against each other just for a gotcha. bit of crack at the okay. end and uh, it came down to me and Mark then and, and they took us out to, I think it was like could have been 62 yards gotcha. and Mark hit one wide I hit one wide he banged one over then and then I banged mine over Right. Okay. and then we both missed the last one but it just showed the capability that we had and I think that that sat well with the, with the coaches over there and um. Yeah, after that, it was again just keep training away of Tag and he was getting taped for the for the APP and then the choice was made then around um the start of December or just the end of November the choice was made and I got the phone call and Here we yeah, are. It was, eh? Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> so that UK trip was probably a big stepping stone. I didn't actually think it was as 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 um as big of a stepping stone to get to where get you to where you are now. So that trip was back at the end of September, October, was it? Around October time, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, so you had a couple of sessions done before that with Tag, mm. and he's a coach. So yeah. actually anybody that doesn't know back home Tag leader, he would have um, played Connacht rugby. Not right, and he, yep. he was in the CFL as well. Um, <coughs> um, I think he was up in Hamilton for a bit and stuff. So um, he's been a big help to you. Um, he's, he, he's coaching you at the minute. Have you learned much from his style of coaching of how to strike the ball more so than maybe what you've learned from your own experience with the Gaelic football? Yeah, that was that was a big transition at the start because big thing you you watch any NFL kicker and any of the best out there, like the follow through of their leg, everything is is so different to to what I do as a Gaelic footballer, as the way I strike a football and to make that transition at the start. I remember Ty kept telling me about how I used to exit. I always exit left on a Gaelic football. Like I'm always leaning to sort of get that power of, uh, on the Gaelic football. Whereas here, it's your straight body through and your leg straight through. So that was a small, tough transition at the start. But obviously, anything you do in life, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, in fairness, Ty, he would have done a lot of video work from maybe behind me, from in front of me, from beside. And... Um, he would have learned a lot from that. He would send through clips of your kicking and stuff. So in fairness to him, he's very, very clued into that sort of stuff. He's been there, he's done it. Um, so any any wee pointers he could give. And then obviously there's, it's got a lot more technical now yeah. in the last while in terms of where your body should be landing and stuff like that. So uh, definitely learned a lot from him. Because that's quite interesting because in Gaelic football, GA, as a coach, even myself, you're uh, worried or focused on the collective team. Like... Has anybody really, obviously goalkeeping coaches have to focus on catching, focus on command the area, the communication. Like Tag only focused on that striking element and you were doing that coaching of striking element during the, the run with Scottsdale and you had some big games there, obviously where you were, I think you were very good even the Kilku winner and stuff. Do you think that probably helped even alongside the run, alongside with, with, with Scottsdale? Yeah, because funny enough, he texts me after the Kilku game and goes... Um he sent me the one I missed in the first half, yeah. one I missed second. He just showed difference in the body shapes and stuff. But um, I wouldn't put it solely down to to that coaching as well, like because as I said, there's a different style. Yeah, it's, okay. It's, it's, it's a different style. Like a lot of it would have come down to what I'm used to in the Gaelic football field. Right. You didn't necessarily change your style in going into matches in, in Scottsdale. No, and never. Based no, off. no, okay. no, no, definitely not. Something I wouldn't do. Okay, so you have the combine coming up, and it is surreal, even for. Um, ourselves to talk with the combine coming from GA background you know you, you watch movies you watch documentaries in the combine so you're actually going to be taking part in the in the actual kicking combine now is is there going to be different days for different positions let's say for the combine or is every all runners everyone going to be there at the same from what I'm gathering I don't know the full ins and outs of the full combine but from what I gather we're in the first day or two of it before all the college the likes of the runners and all that are coming in. I don't believe we're going to be there the same day as them um, because we'll be using a lot of the pitch okay. for obviously the kick inside of it. So um, I know with Indianapolis, it's, it's the one big pitch in, inside the dome okay. and where it's used. So I think the specialists are all in on one day. There's about 20 to 30, I think, of the specialists coming in. So um, 
in terms of that, I, I, I think we're the first day or two of that combine. And then after that, that's where most of the college ones are coming in then in the different positions. So. Right, okay. And so all the kickers are basically going to be from all American colleges that you're going to be American with? colleges and then the international player pathway. And do you know that if you're going to be in competition with them or how does it run? Yeah, you, you probably are in direct competition with them in terms of spots and stuff. But I think the advantage that we have is, as an international player is that every... NFL team now has that extra slot that they can choose. So there's a 53-man roster okay. for for teams. Um, the 54th can be the international player. So I'm not I'm not necessarily taking up a roster spot for someone that they might want to get in. Gotcha. So essentially, a kicker they might want to think let's put an Irish kicker in here and at this 54th place, and we won't take up someone who's a prospect in a different position. Gotcha. Right. So okay. So that's the advantage we probably have ahead of some of the college kickers, but. At the end of the day, it comes down to how good you are on at the combine day. Like, yeah. no point me saying this and missing eight, zero out of eight, like, or missing eight out of eight even. Um, that's the. Does it go by distance or is it pure accuracy? Like, are they going to see take you out twenty yards, thirty yards, forty yards, and go, go out that way, or what way is it going to work? Do you know? Yeah, well, distance distance will come into it after obviously forty five yards. I think look at the, the world record field goal. I think it's like sixty two or sixty six. I think it was Justin Tucker who hit that. In terms of PATs, I think it's 33 yards. Okay. So, point after touchdown, 33 yards, that's, you're expected to hit that. I think anything inside 45 to 50 yards won't be expected to hit. Yeah. After that, that's where maybe the differences in quality will appear, the differences in between the kickers will start to appear. And that's where coaches may want, we get intrigued. But I think what coaches are going to look for here is a bit of raw talent, first and foremost. But in terms of that, they'll also be looking at how consistent he is and, you know, how mentally good he is in terms of, right, he's missed one that he should score. How does he react to the next one or two? Does he just continue that role of missing mm -hmm. or does he get himself back up and score the next one, score the next one? So I'm telling you this as a player that I've never been at a combine before. Yeah. I don't know what these coaches want to see. and But I, if I was a coach going to, to pick a kicker, I'd be picking him on, firstly, I'd like to see his raw talent, his distance. But after that, I'd like to see how consistent he is and how, can he make the scores that are yeah. expected to be made. And then obviously the kickoffs is going to be another big one as well. Like kickoffs are obviously you start the game, and you also start the game again after touchdowns. Um, and again, it's just to get you're giving the ball back to the other team, but it's to getting that ball as far down the pitch as you can. And the aim, what we've been doing, and one of the big things that happened at that English combine was that's what separated the Irish ones from the rest was the length that we were getting. Like um, I know Niall, Charlie, Mark, myself, we were all hitting touchbacks. Um, consistently um, and Touchbacks, the one, what's that? Touchback is so when it goes into the end zone Clear, clear, clear zone You're clear okay, the end you. zone and, uh, So how far can you get beyond that? So 65 yards you're hitting to the goal line okay. And then after that's the end zone And then it hit, goes into minuses after that And I think I hit like a minus 12 or 15 On my first kick And I just hit a real big one in the warm up one I was thinking did I just use all, yeah, my, yeah. all my state in this But um, no, I hit a I hit a minus fifteen in my very first one, and I think that was a clear indication mm. to them that this boy has got something about him. And um, after that, I think it was in around minus two, minus five after them in the next two. But once you're hitting consistently, hitting touchbacks, what they what they're looking for, they're happy. And then there's the other side of it as well, where it's a bit accuracy and hang time. So okay. four plus seconds of hang time is massive. Even when they're starting off. Yeah, because look, you're going. You could be in Green Bay going to play a game and it is freezing in Green yeah, Bay yeah. and uh, like your aim is you might not get you might not be fit to make um, the end zone like because of the ball being that rock hard and maybe a wind against you and stuff so your aim is to get that ball far down the pitch and outside the numbers as close to the end zone as you can Do you become part of the defence then? Potentially yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So you want to clear it? <laughs> yeah so uh, you'd, be, you'd be mad to clear it or put it into an area where um so the aim of the four plus second hang time is to yeah. get your boys down the pitch and get gotcha. as far and far as you can down the yeah. pitch and hope that they block it that you're not yeah, the last yeah. man yeah, yeah. taking a hundred runner. So brilliant, brilliant. So is there a different kicker for the field goal and the start? No, the field goal and the kick and the kickoffs are the same kicker. Oh right, okay. Yeah. So you punter is a different kicker. Gotcha. I did not know that. Okay, very good. So um, <clears throat> so yeah, wow. So. The combine, you do the combine, do you know, are you part of the draft, is it? Or what way does that work? I can't honestly tell you, you. I haven't a clue. I haven't a clue. Right, okay. So, um, now, 
Punters are different. Um, we I know Ross Ross Bulge, Ross. Yeah. He's flying over there. He's in Idaho. Yeah, Idaho isn't he? at the minute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's doing very well. There's a couple of other Irish kickers. Do you know? Yeah, there's uh, as I mentioned, Adam Quinn. He's at the NFL yeah. Academy. He'll be looking obviously to get into into a college very soon. And um, Ronan Patterson. He's um, in Cavan, isn't he? He's a Cavan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm actually met them up at the leader kicking day. We actually had a session. Uh, a month or two ago there up, up in up in uh, Sport Ireland right and uh, funny Ross and Ronan were there and Adam Qu- Adam Quinn was there and just learning of them and the culture of the whole thing over yeah. there and you know how they've adapted to life and stuff so it was interesting like because it's, it's hopefully a pattern it's hopefully a, a an area where I'll have to focus on and in come next yeah. maybe mid mid June or whatever and um, trying to sort out where you know yeah you know a new area, a new, yeah. a new home, like so. Um, has it been a lo- lonely journey so far? Do you feel it is? Like it's 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 an individual role. Really. It's like an individual in a team sport. Yeah, it's similar to goalkeeper. Like. Yeah, but the way the goalkeeping roles change now, you're you're as as well out the pitch as you are in the goals. Whereas with a kicker, your your main job is to kick and kick consistently and kick well, and then you're off the pitch and you're watching a game. Like you mm. could be used in a game five to six times, maybe more, but. Um, it can be it could be a lonely job and it can be a lonely journey like because not too NFL is big in Ireland like you watch it Conor McCarthy there watches it a lot of people I know watch it I watched a bit of it my cousin watched a bit of it but at the end of the day not too many know about it like yeah. know about loads of it know no. about what they just see what's on the TV that we, nobody knows what's going to happen away from that and that's the part you're going to have to get used to and being a homebird like myself there'll be that tough tough transition if if it does come about. Uh, there's no guarantee it will come about. I could be back, back playing um, Gaelic football, and at the end of March, that's yeah. that's the that's the ruthless culture of this whole journey. Like you know, we put all this effort and investment into it, but at the end of the day, if you're not good enough, you're not good enough. You come back and you play your trade. But I'm confident I'll go over there and make a make a statement in some sort. And you know, if that comes about and I and I do it, I'll have a big decision to make, and then that'll be. Yeah. Well, the very best of luck. Cheers, and, thank you. Um, we're gonna actually take a few balls down to the pitch. Uh, you might get a first uh, first opportunity to showcase, pull it back home, some field goals. Is that okay? Yeah, all good. No problem. Yeah. This episode is kindly sponsored by Whoop. Recovery is crucial for GA athletes to optimize performance and prevent injuries. The physically demanding nature of Gaelic games requires proper rest, hydration and nutrition for muscle repair and mental rejuvenation. Every morning, athletes I coach will check their recovery score so I can plan their training load. The higher the recovery score, the more stress I can put on them so they can achieve fitness gains. You can use the link provided in the description to get started this off-season. Right, Ro, we're down here in our local pitch, Scrastown. Okay. We're going to give a go with the American footballs. We're going to do some field goals. Okay. You were telling us in the interview that a field goal is about 30, is 33 yards. 33 yards, yeah. So touchdown and it's 33 yards. And that doesn't change? No, no. And does, do you, is it all from the middle? There's middle or there's left hash or right hash. I'm not fully sure, but I think it's straight down the middle on, on touchdowns. Okay. Right. So what we'll do is we'll hit a couple of um, field goals post touchdown. And then we'll even add maybe 5 yards, 10 yards, 15 yards, maybe to put you under a bit of pressure. Right. Does that sound good? Go on ahead. Okay, so here's the ball. I'll let you walk through your setup. So this is the tee that you've been using over the last weeks. Yeah. And, um, it's and just bumps. tee for practice, yeah. So in all the games, obviously, there's someone going to be holding it and getting their fingers chopped off. Right, okay. Well, I'm going to say very, very little. I'll let you get uh, focused on what your technique is going to look like. And we'll see um, how the first couple of shots go, okay? Nice. So Rory, when you're, obviously we have Gaelic footballs here. Is, Amer- is an American football, I believe it's a little bit more narrow or pretty similar. Are you just focusing on getting that ball over the bar or is there a certain section of that goal that you're looking to hit? No, so they could, obviously that's a bigger goal than, than the American football ones. The American football ones are more narrow. Okay. Um, but my aim is just, I was go a wee bit hash right or hash left of the, black, of the blue spot there as you see it. Um, hey, I'm small, and small. That sort of that. So I'm right. trying just to get a sort of an area in that back round where that blue spot is there. Gotcha. Um, just either side of that there. If you're there, you're golden, really. Yeah. And see your step back technique. Is that the exact same as Gaelic football? 
Did you change it? No, there? it has to be. There's only you're only you've only 1.3 seconds from when you nod to your snapper. Oh, when right. you nod to your holder, sorry. You've only 1.3 seconds hit the ball, or you're going to get blocked. Oh right, so you have to change that. Like, your whole steps. your whole steps up. I know it has to be a whole lot different. I can't take seven steps. You can take as many as you want for kickoff, but for uh, for this, you right. have to be as close to the ball as you can. Right. Without obviously affecting your kicking, but. Because in Gaelic football, you do actually have a short stance anyway. Yeah. So that suits you. Yeah, it suits me. And it suits me well. I can get enough power in, in a short run up, but um, once I nod to once I ball the holder. I have to have that ball away inside 1.3 okay. or 2 seconds. Right, okay. So that's 30 metres, obviously you've kicked 45 metres in Gaelic, 50, 60 even. Um, so the 30 metres is post touchdown and what we'll do is we'll extend it now, we'll go 35, 40. See how you get on, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right Ro, so we're at 40 metres which is about 45 to 50 yards. Any Americans watching, okay, I'm sorry we're talking about metres here. So in Gaelic football, we always talked about meters. So I'll let you have a crack at this. Okay. <sighs> Happy? Happy enough, yeah. Happy enough, good lad. So. I think you might have striked the first one a wee bit sweeter. Did you get under that ball? Probably got under a wee bit, yeah. Um, probably felt I just need to get more height on it to maybe get the wind in there. I've added another 10 metres, so we're up to what, 50 metres now, which in yards is about 60, 70 yards. And this is a like a field goal um, attempt. So this is still um, in a situation where you're trying to score, not necessarily clear. Is that right? This is the score, yeah. Okay, so give this a go. Take your time. Top class. Oh, stuff row, brilliant. Okay, we'll not, uh, not tear the arse for too much, kicking yeah. too many balls. Okay, but look, it's great to chat to you. And like I said in the in the coffee shop, best luck. Cheers. And uh, hopefully we'll see many of those kicks to come. Ah, uh, hopefully yeah. Right, oh, good yeah. stuff. Thanks very much for the episode. No bother.